Meet the pygmy hippo. They live in Africa and they are too stinking cute. Like this little one. Oh my God, look how adorable he is. Too bad these guys are dying out. Yep, they're endangered. There's only about two or 3,000 of them left in the wild. Mainly because, you guessed it, as usual, humans are screwing something up. We're clear cutting and logging their habitat. If they all die, the species will be gone forever. In a word, extinct. The pygmy hippo story isn't unique. There are lots of endangered species that environmentalists have been urging, imploring, just begging us to protect for years. They use all kinds of different tactics. They pull on our heartstrings and show us how cute and sad these little animals are. They appeal to our fears. Stop clear cutting rainforests. One of those plants might cure cancer. And they tap into our selfish side. Like, if you don't save the coral reefs, you'll never be able to see these majestic places in person and take the perfect selfie. But despite all this, species go extinct all the time. Check out this giant list of extinct species, like the Caribbean monk seal, the Yangtze river dolphin, and the St. Helena earwig. So why should we care if a species goes extinct? I mean, does anyone really miss the St. Helena earwig? Wait, what is it? what's an earwig, Lauren? Oh, that? Okay, so throughout Earth's history, scientists know of five mass extinctions. This is when a ton of life on Earth got wiped out. The most recent happened about 65 million years ago when the dinosaurs all died off. But scientists are estimating we are in the middle of the sixth mass extinction right now, where species are dying out at crazy high rates. Some estimates range from 1,000 to 10,000 times higher than normal. And for the most part, we humans are to blame. We humans tend to destroy nature so we can live with all our luxurious modern conveniences like electricity, indoor skydiving, food trucks, and airplanes. I mean, pretty much anything and everything awesome. And saving endangered species can be a huge pain and super expensive. It can mean big sacrifices on our part, like, you know, not building that awesome indoor skydiving building where these wetlands are. And it can be especially hard in developing countries. I mean, how do you tell people whose very livelihood depend on poaching or hunting endangered species to stop? Like in areas in Mexico where jobs are hard to come by so people end up selling endangered sea turtle eggs, even at the risk of getting caught and spending nine years in prison. In a lot of places, this could be a life or death choice. So is trying to save these endangered species really worth it? Well, there are of course moral and ethical arguments to save species, like all life has a right to be here or that we owe it to our grandchildren to preserve species so that they can also see them in the wild. And let's be honest, when it comes to saving species, some of us are more inclined to care about the oh so cute and adorable ones, like these panda bears or these sand kittens, and it may be harder to get on board saving this weird looking salamander called an ohm. Ew. I, I mean, I, I'm not against saving it, but it is ugly. But more reasons aside, there are practical reasons we should care. Our very survival could depend on it. You see, living things in an ecosystem depend on each other, and the disappearance of one species can have big impacts on the whole thing. A lot like how a Jenga tower depends on each block and becomes more unstable as pieces are removed and rearranged. <laughs> as long as it wasn't me. <laughs> Take the cute cuddly sea otter. They live in kelp forests and oceans and eat sea urchins. In the early 1900s, they were hunted almost to extinction because they made luxurious and fashionable fur coats. That is before wearing a fur became like a social taboo. And when the sea otter populations dropped, the sea urchin population surged, eating up all the kelp and destroying the kelp forest. And if you're thinking, so what? I've never even heard of a kelp forest. First of all, kelp forests are these crazy cool underwater forests made of these like giant seaweed type structures. And secondly, they're crucial to the overall health of the ocean and we benefit a lot from them. They provide habitat, food, and breeding grounds for a lot of marine life, including some tasty seafoods you might like, like lobster, crab, and rockfish. We're, we're getting some need after this, right? For sure. Kelp forests can also protect coastal areas from flooding due to storm surges, and they're made for some pretty cool scuba and snorkeling spots. Not to mention kelp is in a lot of beauty products, like shampoo. The list goes on. So right about now, you should be starting to feel sad about the sea urchins destroying this cool habitat. But don't worry, this story has a happy ending. Sea otter hunting was outlawed, and so now the sea otter population is back on the rise, though some populations are still endangered. And kelp forests are just one example of an ecosystem. There's forests, grasslands, deserts, you get what I'm talking about. And each one of these ecosystems helps us out by providing unique benefits like food, water, and natural resources. These benefits are collectively known as ecosystem services. Think of ecosystem services as pretty much the opposite of your internet company's customer service. Ecosystems actually help you out while internet companies will put you on hold for days. Did y'all just hang up on me? 
But back to ecosystems. They are healthiest when there are lots of different kinds of species in them. So when we start to kill off a species, that ecosystem starts to get shaky. Kind of like that Jenga tower. <laughs> And it's sometimes it's hard to predict how the loss of one species will impact an ecosystem until it's gone. And then, it may be too late. So given all this, we're curious. How much are you willing to sacrifice to preserve a species? Take for example the Amazon rainforest where white-cheeked spider monkeys are endangered because of clear cutting for cattle pastures. Like, would you give up that burger whose meat came from that region? So how do you decide how far you're willing to go to help out that endangered species? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh. Before I leave, if you like this video, be sure to check out this totally unrelated video of ours about how teen blood could be the next anti-aging fad. Speaking of cute, weird animals, have y'all heard of Deep Look? Check out their channel. They've got a bunch of awesome close-ups of animals doing crazy things. I mean, it'll creep you out sometimes and you know, it makes me squirmish, but like in a cool, good way, I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.